Hello and welcome everyone. I'm gonna show you yet another build today. Uh, this is the one and only White Knight. This is a retaliation ranged two-hander paladin. Um, building around the mythical Hellborn and also like building more specifically around the retaliation damage added to attack to righteous fervor. Of the headborn and also you making use of the retaliation damage added to attack to bursting round. So this is kind of a like well uh <laughs> like saying typical range build is like completely wrong, right? Because this is not a typical range build. This is a range build using retaliation as its main source of damage. For those of you that don't know how retaliation works in this game, like uh for example pieces of gear, say like these shoulders, like they have five retaliation on them, five hundred and eighty five 485 fire retaliation, right? And so whenever an enemy hits you with an melee attack, he will get this fire retaliation as damage. So usually retaliation damage only got triggered by melee hits, like melee, like enemies hitting you with melee hits. Um, but since Forgotten Gods, we got, well, skill modifiers that add retaliation damage two specific attacks, in this case, for example, two Righteous Fervor, two Bursting Round, and there are some that do it like on a base as well, like Retribution, for example, this also has 12% Retaliation damage added to attack to Righteous Fervor as well. Um, so this kind of makes you, well, a little bit more like a, like play a little bit more like a normal build. Um, like you're still a little bit weaker against ranged enemies, but you're gonna be stronger than um, an average build against melee units usually. Um, but overall, retribution or like retaliation is so strong in general that you can, like, if you have a good concept, you can make pretty much anything work right now. Um, ever like, even though like Warlord got nerfed like on the second patch of this expansion, it's retaliation is really, really strong still. There were lots of people crying back then that retaliation got nerfed. Um, but honestly, it was nerfed because it was way too brokenly OP, and now it's like, now it's like balanced, but still very good. Um, so first of all, I showed you this weapon, right? This is like the the thing we're gonna build around here. Um, let's also take a look at our classes. So first of all, we are an Oathkeeper. This is like the main class here in this case, and righteous, righteous fervor is like our main ability. But since we are using retaliation as our main damage. We don't really care about any of that flat damage, right? We just care about the retaliation here. So we have retribution, ma retribution maxed out at 22 out of 12. So this is more of a retribution build than a righteous fervor build, one could say. Also, we got consecration at 13 out of 12, which is like a nice sweet spot when it comes to like attack speed, DA, and armor and elemental resistance. 13% uh, attack speed here for 13 points, as well as 100 DA and 26 elemental resistance and 60% armor. Um, yeah, that's just a one-pointer. Uh, presence of Virtue, as with almost every Oathkeeper, you should have this at 12 out of 12. Like, at the, the soft cap's really good. You can put even more points if you're, like, like, if you have more points to spare, but other than that, it's not really worth it. Um, also, this does give us some physical retaliation. So for that reason, I kind of would like to have more points here, so I will maybe switch this up a little bit get more uh, like flat physical retaliation here because everything that is like retaliation will mean more damage in the end and also note that retaliation build like at retaliation damage can also be converted at least when you have like retaliation build I like retaliation damage added to attack like that part of retaliation can definitely be converted and since our weapon here converts all physical damage to fire to RF all physical retaliation damage that we have will also be basically fire retaliation build, uh, like fire retaliation damage. So this character is a fire retaliation ranged righteous fervor build in the end. Um, one point in Haven, um, you either put like 3 out of 10 to Haven or like 5 out of 10 to Haven. If you're not using a shield, like 3 out of 10 and 5 out of 10 are like kind of the, sweet, the sweet spots, right? Um, and I think above that is kind of wasted unless you use a shield. So yeah, 3 out of 10 Haven, also 1 point in Rebuke, 3 out of 10 Rebuke. Um, this does add percent retaliation damage. 
So I would also kind of like to put some more points here. But if I had like more points to spare, I would probably start putting the points into Presence of Virtue first, and then later into Rebuke. Um, resilience, the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker of Oathkeeper. Five out of twelve is a nice value point. Uh, Eleven out of twelve is also really, really good. Um, but five out of twelve should be like the bare minimum. So we have the bare minimum here, which is fine. Um, yeah, really good circuit breaker. Ascension, really, really strong. Gives us flat fire retaliation, which is super good. Percent retaliation, which is super good. Flat damage absorption, which is one of the best damage mitigation abilities in this game. So, yeah, like, hard cap does put as many points as you can here. Pretty good. Uh, clarity of, pur of purpose. I will actually probably pull some points here, because I think 5 out of 12 is like 3 points. Here, so I will probably like put two points out of those and back to Presence of Virtue because not only does Presence of Virtue give us OA all the time, whereas this is only like conditional, but also Presence of Virtue gives us flat physical retaliation on top, right? Uh, whereas this one gives us CC resistance, which is also really good. Um, as you can see, the CC resistance is not the very best. Uh, 41 without Ascension up and like 73 with Ascension up. This is not that good, and uh, if you can, you should craft some more items for stun resistance. I wasn't able to do that yet, but if you can, your CC resistance, your stun resistance will be more, like, will be higher, and because of that, like, more, um, how do you say that? <laughs> it will be more, uh, like, you can rely more on it, right? It will be more reliable. Um... Also, we got the Judgment, uh, 1 point here in Judgment, um, 12 points in Crushing Verdict to reduce enemy DA, and 1 point in Heart of Wrath to like proc stuff of our Judgment. Really good proc here, um, also it has Retaliation damage added to attack as well, so this is like a nice aura that deals actually lots of damage. Uh, like 1 point in Virus Smite, 1 point in Tectonic, tectonic Shift, no point in Volcanic Strike, Stride, even though we are kind of a fireball. Uh, not really worth it, not for the damage, like, we need the points somewhere else, right? And, um, uh, like, this is just our defensive run away, get away, uh, movement ability. Doesn't have any re retaliation damage on it anyway, so, yeah, it's kind of whatever. One point in smite, um, honestly, just for the bonus damage to Undead and Chthonians, and that's it. Like, bonus racial damage should uh, affect also retaliation damage. That might be wrong actually, I'm not sure, because like total damage does not affect retaliation damage. I'm not quite sure about racial damage, but I'm thinking this does affect it and make me like deal more damage against Chthonians, but I might be wrong. Anyways, this is just a one pointer and also has like, gives me the ability to hit three targets instead of just one, so it might just be worth it just because of that, right? Um, Guardian of Empyrean, 1 point here, 12 points here, classic, like, uh, just resistance reduction, aura, that's it, nothing else. Uh, we're actually not using Divine Mandate here, we are using Inquisitor's Aura of Stanger instead, because otherwise we wouldn't have any resistance reduction from Inquisitor. Uh, moving on to Inquisitor though, uh, we have like only 1 point in arranged expertise, um, I was, I had like more points here at, at some point, and I was kind of balancing it out between consecration, putting more points in consecration, or more points in crushing verdict, or more points in range expertise. In the end, I felt like this is the most value because you can get 13 attack speed here, 100 DA on top, armor on top, element resistance on top. You get 236 DA reduction here, and here you get 8% attack speed for one point, and then like more attack speed per point, but it's like only 1% per point. And also like the flat peers, we don't care about that. Percent peers, we don't care about that. Percent elemental, we kinda don't care about that either because we're mainly a retaliation build. So, yeah. Uh, bursting round, we just put this to have the highest chance to be used, right? Like, you might remember my weapon doesn't only give me retaliation damage to attack to RF, but also to bursting round on top. So, bursting round will have the retaliation damage from a retribution. The one that's added to RF and the one that's added to the bursting round on top. So you want this to proc as often as possible, kinda. Um, and for that, we have this at 20% chance to be used. 
Um, we're also using the other weapon pool skills. Now this is again one thing that I'm not 100% sure how it works actually because I'm not like the best expert about retaliation builds. But these, uh, this one has three additional projectiles and this one shoots twice, right? Um, I believe this one shooting twice affects retaliation damage as well, so you get like double the retaliation damage, right? Like, because you shoot twice basically. Um, this one, the projectiles, I'm not quite sure if the projectiles have like uh, retaliation damage added to them as well or not. Um, if they have it, this is broken and should probably actually be pushed to 7 out of 10. If the projectiles do not have retaliation damage added to them, I'm not quite sure and you could also drop this. So far I felt like this was pretty, doing pretty well though. And uh, three projectiles basically multiplying my rata times four. If that's how it works. If not, it's just like some additional damage and that's fine as well. It's only one point anyways. Um, but yeah, if it really does affect rata, then consider also putting this to seven out of ten. Because at seven out of ten you will get four additional projectiles instead of three additional ones. Um, but yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'm not really the expert in retaliation, to be honest. Um, I don't quite know how it works yet. I have to like ask some people for that. Um, anyways, let's move on. Word of Renewal, 12 out of 12 here. Um, well, nothing to see here. I just didn't put more points here because we have like already enough DA on this character. Otherwise, feel free to overcap this to whatever you want this to be, right? That's really good to overcap this as well for DA and that's damage from Chthonians and Eldritch. Uh, also, we got Vigor to 12 out of 10, mostly because of HP and also because I'm playing hardcore and I want to have like a like a little bit more of an HP pool than when you're playing softcore. If you're playing softcore, you can put this down to a one-pointer. It's fine as well. Um, Steel Resolve has like a really nice value point at 8 of 10. 8 out of 10. Because you get like 10% more damage to Chthonians and Eldritch. And also have 26% Aether and Curse Resistance on this one. But the points after that give you a little bit less resistances. So I think you should at least put this to 8 out of 10. You can also put more points. It's really good. But again, it's kind of... Point, uh, like the, the build is kind of point starved, as you can see, like I have to take many soft caps or value points, where I believe value points are. Um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to, to put more points here. Because, for example, moving on to the seal, we want to have the seal, right? The seal is super good, uh, flat absorption, really strong, really strong. Uh, especially on a build that has, like on a paladin that, that has ascension and uh, Inquisitor Seal, right? And also we're using the Phoenix Devotion, so we have like triple flat absorption. And basically the more flat absorption you stack together, the better it becomes. So yeah, it's already like one of the best stats in the game, and if you stack them together it becomes even better. So yeah, we want to max out this one as well. Also we got the Arcane Empowerment maxed out, well mainly for fire retaliation and crit damage. Uh, really good as well. Uh, one put it in null field, like you can take this one out, it's not that important. Um, it just gives you like another 25% dodge to ranged projectiles, which, well, we don't want them to hit us really because they don't proc retaliation damage anyway, so this is kind of good to have in my opinion, but you don't necessarily need it. I guess you can take out the point here if you don't feel like this is good for you, um, but yeah, I, I got it. I think it's fine. Um, 12 out of 12, deadly aim, just like soft cap, never over cap this. But always soft cap, it's really good at a soft cap. And yeah, Aura of Sanger, we already talked about, that's kind of like, yeah. 14 over 12, really good. Uh, reduces enemy damage, reduces enemy element resistance. You want this as high as possible. Moving on to Devotions. So this is where it gets a little bit weird, right? Um, we have actually zero tier 3 Devotions. <laughs> Um, I wanted to have the Phoenix because, yeah, like I said before, Phoenix and, what's it called, <clears throat> like Phoenix and uh, Ascension and Inquisitor Seal are really good together when it comes to damage resorption. Also, this gives us burn retaliation damage, so that's pretty nice for retaliation builds. And also, yeah, also some of the notes actually give us retaliation damage as well, so it's really, really nice. Um, 
Another devotion that we absolutely have to get because it's like a core in every any fire build, right? It's Eldritch Fire to reduce any any mini enemy fire resistance. So we got the uh, Solar Switchblade because of that. It's like a must-have. Then another must-have I feel like for well default attackers is the Ghoul. So yeah, we have the Ghoul here as well. Um, yeah, another like must-have. Really nice circuit breaker. Really strong. Um, for flat. Resistance Reduction, we use Raise the Dead, because it's honestly, this devotion is really, really strong right now. It's one of the strongest, if not the strongest tier 2, tier two devotion in the game right now. Also 6% life steal, 6% attack speed here. And yeah, really strong. Like, we want life steal, we want attack speed, we want flat reduction on enemy resistances. This is what we get. Um, now for Retaliation um, devotions, we got, for example, the Messenger of War. Really strong, gives us additional fire retaliation, or retail, etc. We got uh, Uza's Decree, giving us more physical retaliation, which also gets converted to fire. Alright, so moving on to the next retaliation devotion here. We got Targo the Builder. It was like retaliation damage, HP, Aether, Chaos Resistance, more armor, and more flat physical retaliation here on the skill as well. It also increases the armor, but also gives us like shield damage blocked and stuff like that, right? Which we really cannot use, but then again, there are like so many retaliation um, devotions that are like, um, they usually have like retaliation and shield stats together, right? Like Obelisk of Man here is kind of like that as well. Um, Obelisk does give us less physical, like flat physical retaliation than this one though. And uh, like the proc also requires you to have a shield in the first place. And then, so yeah, it's like not that easy to use. Um, physical retaliation devotions in the first place when you're not using a shield, but Targo is still good enough to, to like use it even though you're not using a shield in my opinion. Um, also Targo doesn't need as much affinity as say the Obelisk of Men here. And we, like I was kind of able to use this anyway because I had Watcher, which is like really good overall defensively anyway, it's right, you, you kind of want this in almost every build. Um, Panther is kind of good as well, and um, yeah, that's how I got uh, Targo activated. Um, now I could also take these two nodes here. I would have to like sacrifice Jacka for that, right? I could go for eight reds and stuff, like put one point in the crossroads, take out the Jacka, and get these two nodes. But Jacka giving me like six percent total speed is, I believe, too valuable because like attack speed. Is really strong for this build as well. It's not only retaliation damage that we focus here, we also focus on attack speed as well. Because, well, our ability that like uses the retaliation damage is RF and that scales off attack speed. Yeah, one last devotion that I didn't talk about yet is the Empty Throne. It's just like a tier 1 devotion, really, really strong now after the buff. And we do need really need the uh, stun reduction here quite a bit. Uh, the other nodes are also really good actually now. <clears throat> so the main reason why we're not using a tier 3 devotion is actually because we are, well, this strange uh, archetype which has like ranged retaliation. So we're not using a shield, but we still do retaliation damage. And there aren't like any tier 3 devotions that are actually good for that, so... Well, we just take a bunch of tier 2s, and the tier 2s are really, really solid actually, like Phoenix, Uzad, Tago, Watcher, Revenant, even Messenger of War, they're all really, really strong actually. When it comes to the gear, obviously the Hellborn is our uh, core weapon here. We have fire retaliation, uh, burn retaliation, like we have... Um, Physical damage converted to fire damage to RF, right? We have 15% retaliation damage added to attack to RF. We have 20% retaliation damage added to attack to bursting round. We have more radius to bursting round, plus two skills to inquisitor, plus four to retribution. Uh, in this case, I rolled, like I had, I don't know, 20 of these, I believe. But this one has 26% attack speed, 9,471 burn retaliation. Um, this is like after scaling, I believe, and 197% or retail damage on top. 
So yeah, really good. Um, I like the, the core of this build basically. Now, how do we improve on that? You have Okolov's Visage. This is a, um, an item that drops specifically from the Messenger boss in Act 7. Um, so this one gives us another like 399 fire retail in this case, plus one skills to Oathkeeper, 6% retaliation damage added to attack on like to RF again, like on top of all the other Rata, um, and 60% all damage modifier as well for RF. RF. And also 4% attack speed, and well it can also convert Chaos to Fire, which we don't really care about that much. Um, I No, we don't really care about it to be honest. Uh, stone Guard Ward, this, um, we're using like 2-piece Stone Guard here, like for physical damage retaliation, which gets, gets converted to Fire, and also because this adds another 9% Rata to RF. Really good, also has attack speed 9% in this case, max Pierce, max Chaos, all rest as well. Really, really strong uh, amulet here. Um, now for the rings, we are using... I'm using Mythical, Open Hand and Closed Fist of Vengeance. These are like generally good for all kinds of, well, retaliation builds. Um, in this specific case, I'm kind of wondering if maybe Jackson's Lucky Bullets are better because of like the weapon pool skill on it. I'm not quite sure, I haven't tested it yet. Um, that said, Mythical Open Hand and Closed Fist worked very well for me so far, so these are really good. Um, but yeah, like Jackson's Lucky Bullet or whatever it's called, the ring might be really strong as well. Maybe even better than us. Mythical Dread Armors of Azragar, Azragor actually, whoops. Um, <clears throat> this one is, I don't know, like universally probably the best or one of the best Retaliation chest, except for maybe armor of the three for acid retail, but we convert like more physical to fire than acid to fire, and because of that, well, we're using this one because of Azragorian tactics, right, giving us another 300 to 3 to 460 physical damage retail, aka fire retail in our case. <clears throat> um, we don't convert any of the wit to fire though, I believe. That's kind of sad, but it's still really good. <clears throat> also get another 4% last year. So yeah, really good chest. And also take care of our chaos resistance as well. <clears throat> uh, for the pants, we're using the mythical Thornhide leg Leggards. These are again really, really, really strong. Um, we convert the physical to fire. Yeah, just super good. Uh, we talked about the belt already, kind of, right? This, yeah. Really good. Uh, I you can actually like you can find this and craft this. I crafted this and troll I believe physique. So that's like eight percent physique now on this one. Really nice. Um, but you can also craft this for like stun resistance, right? I didn't do that for some reason. <laughs> uh, crafting this for stun resistance would probably be better, and like getting even more stun resistance than it already has is more valuable. Um, Serenior's commendation. The only fire retail metal in the game, and has a really nice and high value. So yeah, really good. This is just what you want. Uh, for boots, we use the stone traders, another physical damage retail item, um, which again gets converted. And like armor, good stuff. Also has this uh, like stone tread uh, absorption shield, which gives us more additional protection against physical peers and also increases our armor while it's up. So yeah, really nice. <coughs> now the gloves, I'm actually only using them to have like plus 3 to retribution, to have attack speed, and for the crit damage to RF, right? Because I believe the Rata should be able to crit, so this gives us an additional 6% crit to RF, and also lots of attack speed, and yeah, that's basically what I'm using them for. Also for pierce resistance, I guess, which I don't really need. Um, there are like other options you could have here. They're like really good. Um, like Black Sea Gauntlets, for example, would be probably pretty good as well. But Black Sea Gauntlets don't have attack speed, I believe. So the attack speed here on this one and the crit damage might be better than Black Sea Gauntlets, actually. Mythical Dawn Shard Podrons. Fire retaliation damage on this one. Also has a proc with retaliation damage on it as well. 
Um, the proc also reduces enemy damage, but we don't really care about that because it doesn't stack with um, our exclusive skill or of Sanger, right? Um, but still, like overall, pretty solid for retaliation fire damage, in my opinion. And for the relic, we are using the honor relic. The honor is like the um, the best retaliation relic, I would say, for non shield users. Um, Plus one Oath Keeper, 12% damage to humans, 508 flat fire retail on this one, some attack speed as well, kind of a low roll actually. Uh, but also it gives us this wire cascade ability, kind of looks like Obsidian Tremor, but this has like a cooldown. Um, and this skill also has 25% retaliation damage added to attack on every of the 5 projectiles, so it's in total like 125% retail damage, so that's... Pretty nice, especially like when you're like shotgunning someone that's like standing in front of you. And it's like actually always worth it to use. It's really good. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, then also we have a relic, Rune of the Fallen Kings here actually. Um, you can just use like <sighs> Rune of Displacement, right? Just have like the safer teleport. Um, in my case, since we're an Oath Keeper, we have Wire Smite already like as our more defensive way of running away, and then we can also use Wood of the Fallen Kings, which is basically the same thing, right? But like even less cooldown um, to like run around and also to apply more retaliation damage to attack. And this one has what? Um, another 30% retaliation damage added to attack, so this will actually deal some, well, not really that much damage, but like okay damage, right? So first of all, we can check out a demo kill time here, right? Um, and after that, I'm gonna show you this build a little bit more in action. So we got around like 25 to 24 seconds, right? Which is already really good um, <clears throat> for like uh, the active part of retaliation builds. And say you're fighting a melee character, like an, a melee enemy, right? That one will get even more damage from you because whenever he hits you, you will also get hit by the normal like default retaliation damage on top. So let's take a small walk through the bog and see who or what we can find here. So first of all we can pay Kraval a small visit, right? One thing to note about Kraval, same as with Logorian, right? If you put the seal on him, it will like spawn back here, right? Like if you just attack him and put the seal down, it will like not affect you. You have to like put the seal onto yourself here, otherwise you will not get the buff. Because he's like too big, you know. Are in the grove and the feral thicket actually. Let's see how thick this will be here. Oh yeah, that's a pretty thick pack actually.
Alright. Trials of two corruption done. Um, so yeah, there's this guy here, right? Vinoton. Uh, you always want to check him out. He can sell you blueprints, and if you're looking for blueprints... Ancient Grove is like a pretty nice place, because you can also buy blueprints from this guy, right? And additionally to the blueprints that you're gonna get at the end of this dungeon. Also, if he has like any frozen hearts or better shells to sell, just buy them. They're pretty nice. Like, you need those components a lot, usually. Um, at least I needed them so much for like so many characters I made. And you can also check out the belts, uh, guns, etc. He has some pretty nice stuff, actually. Yeah, both Mr. Fumble, nor Mr. Krabs, nor the Kitty are like any danger for this build. Uh, they just die, right? That's it. End of story. Hey, where are you running? Red Crab is so scared now. All the time it's running away. Hello? Come here, please. I don't really want your MI because that one is pretty useless, but I want your like average legendaries that you give me. Um oh yeah, also like if you haven't been to Angie Grove before, like if it's like your first time going for Angie Grove. Uh, check out this area here as well. There's gonna be some like one-shot chests there, and also another totally normal shield. Um, yeah, just go there, grab the loot, and continue. Alright, Mr. Gargabo. How are you today? You're gonna save Ascension for the second phase, obviously. If you don't want to use it for the first phase ever. Now we just use it for the second phase and just attack. There we go. Easy clean. He can't even use any volcanoes, right? It's actually really, really fast, the Skargable kill time, I would say. It's insanely fast, actually. Holy shit. <clears throat> but yeah, that's the engine grow for you. Okay, so here we are at the low card dungeon. Um, whenever you enter this area, make sure to check your freeze resistance. And if it's below 65%, just use a whole frost ointment. Because, like, uh, the traps in here will just be super annoying. Oh, 
Also, we have Rift Claimed Atheriant number 1, 2, and 3, and 4 actually in this dungeon. Um, these are the guys that drop the Dark One set, which you can use on a Vitality Caster. Say, like a Conjurer, or Richelis, or Cabalus, for example. And also, like, an, on a Oppressor as well, actually. So yeah, that was like number two, right? And over here we have number three already. The claimed adherent number three. And uh, then you see this dungeon here all the way at the end is gonna be number four. So you can just go there, get him really quick. But yeah, the drop rate isn't like the best, so we will need lots of runs until you get like all the pieces, especially like the one way in the back, right? It's gonna take some time, so you have to like hope for like the last one in the back to drop the item first, right? And then we go over here back to where Lokar, Lokar is. And he's gonna inform us that we're gonna die here, but I think it's actually gonna be him that dies here, so... First we kill the root of all evil, and after that we kill the evil himself. Actually, I was gonna use pots, but I don't think I need to on this boat. Unless he has like a really strong weapon. He's not any challenge for this build whatsoever, actually. I sad on that drop, he proxed my ghoul around. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. That's why you have a ghoul, right? And yeah, this is already gonna be it for me for this video, guys. Um, if you would like to see more content about this character, feel free to check out my SR50-51, SR65-66 video, my uh, first time low-car video where I fought like a low-car with double physical affixes, and um, yeah, that one was kinda scary actually, compared to the one I fought today. And also like the bourbon clone kill as well. And uh, yeah, I didn't really encounter too many Nemesi so far. Uh, obviously like Kubakabra, and that's it in main campaign. I mean, Kubakabra was pretty easy for this build. And in Shadow Realm I fought like several of them, you can see them in those videos as well. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this build as well. And I would be very grateful if you gave it a like, or comment, or even a sub. Check out my other videos as well, and feel free to ask any questions that you would like to get answered in the chat below, like in the comments below. And yeah, I will see you on the next one.